make sure to listen to the end of this interview when Liam talks about what's the easiest win for you to be more productive. Also, you'll never guess Liam's view on cell phones. Listen up on why a certain productivity tool was burned into his brain because of what happened to his girlfriend. That and much more. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Liam Martin, founder of Staff.com, TimeDoctor.com. He's a master of systems, so it forces him to actually be productive. Thanks for for coming on, uh, Liam. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We're going to talk about how we can get more done in less time, not get sidetracked, distracted. Everyone has those times they're feeling distracted. They have too many project ideas. You know, they have a million browsers open. What's a time where you felt overwhelmed um, and relate to this? Well, so I I think that number one, everyone has problems with productivity. Um, I would say I'm okay at being productive. I'm not great. Uh, I'm definitely not a productive guy. So for me, I fundamentally understood this and was able to really put barriers in place to force me into productivity. And I, I kind of had this moment, and we had shared this a little bit beforehand, and this has already been um, talked about when we were, when I was previously doing some um, some uh, work with you guys. But I remember this is probably this is quite a few years ago now. But I was um, working on my first business straight out of grad school, and it was a tutoring company, and it was an online tutoring company. So I was managing. Um, around 100 tutors, virtual tutors all over the world. And it was a very stressful job. So um, I remember once I chipped a tooth, one of my back molars. Wow. And I showed up at the dentist, and I had this this chipped tooth. And it was creating problems where, you know, if I would drink something hot or drink something cold, it would, uh, it would, it would uh, throb. So I was going to the doctor to get it fixed. So I said, hey... I need to get this fixed, sit down in the dentist chair, and then the um, dentist takes a look, and she just sort of looks up at me and says, which one are you uh, talking about? Because you've chipped almost all of your teeth. Um, that was one of those moments where I was like, wow, I need to make sure that I solve this problem from a stress perspective, or I'm going to be gumless Liam or I'm going to yeah. be gum Liam right yeah Instead you don't of- even realize and a lot of us that happens we don't even realize how much of a toll it's taken on us so deep inside of it that you can't really understand what's it doing to your body um, and I would say now like I'm uh, I just turned 30 so I'm 30 years old and I could guarantee you that if I had continued down that route I probably would have looked 40 right now. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I was fundamentally working 12 hours a day steady on my peak days. I was working sometimes 18 hours a day wow. solving customer service problems. So I was so, handling all these things, and I thought that I could, and frankly, I couldn't. <laughs> or you could, and you'd have no teeth left. Um, yeah. So now I know I love your distinction that you make, that you're not a productive guy, but you let the systems um, have a place and force you to be productive. So tell us that time, before we get into some of the tactics that you use to be the most productive that you can be, or rather just have put those systems in place, what's a time that you remember after you discovered all of this that you were just, everything was running smoothly, you were very productive, so we can get a sense of what, what we'll uh, be able to do after this. Yeah, well, so perfect example is um, next month I'm going down to Vegas to uh, go see what Tony Shea is doing with the, the downtown project. And um, literally this month, all of the processing up to that point has been handled for me. So the entire trip was planned by my executive assistant, MJ. Uh, flight, hotel, payments, all those things were handled. Right now, we're building a company, staff.com, that's growing at approximately 20% month over month. And we're managing a team of almost 50 employees wow. in nine different countries. And we've got marketing divisions, development divisions, operations, and sales. Um, I work a steady four to five hours a day. And Most of us would take that for sure, yeah. Yeah, and, right. and I mean, they're focused four to five hours per day, but it's four to five hours per day. 
Yeah. And um, I can also afford expensive caps for my teeth now as well. Yeah. So let's get into some of the things you do because obviously if you can manage 50 people, several companies, then your advice will be good just for that one person or someone you know, managing a, even a small team or larger team. What's uh, one thing you'd recommend that you do that keeps you most productive? I know you mentioned getting someone to hold you accountable. Can you talk uh, a little bit about, about that? Yeah, so I mean the, the, the greater macro concept is you want to be able to make sure that you're not accountable for your own productivity, that you're putting systems in place to force yourself into productivity. No one wants to be productive. Well, I mean, people do, but um, no one We like to be sidetracked, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I frankly would much rather um, just screw around all day and do whatever the hell I want, right? But, and, and there are some things that I really want to do, like um, I love building this company. It's something that I really love to do, but unfortunately about 90% of the stuff that I do in this company is stuff that I don't want to do. Right, but I want to be able to get to that main goal. So how do you right. get past that big 90% block? Yeah. So I mean, one of the big ones that I've uh, mentioned to you is getting somebody else to hold you accountable. So literally, what we did is um, me and my co-founder Rob, who's also um, productivity master guru guy, um, we built Time Doctor together, which is our first company, and we have an agreement between me and my co-founder that we're going to put in a minimum amount of hours per week or our stocks suffer. Okay, now this happened during the first um, two years, but we've been keeping this going since that point. So we track all of our work time through Time Doctor, and Time Doctor is basically a time tracking application. <clears throat> and this not only tracks how long you work, but it also tracks how productively you've worked. So if you go to Facebook or Twitter or you play World of Warcraft, um, within 10 seconds, you'll get a little pop-up that'll say, "Are you, you know, are you really working on your Mixergy talk? Like right now, I am on uh, Mixergy talks, so that's the that's the current task that I've assigned to myself, right. and I know exactly how many minutes I've spent, and I know that I'm accessing Google Docs, I'm accessing Skype, and I'll be able to go back later and be able to look at that mix and see how productive I was in completing that particular task." Mm -hmm. So this really creates a situation where we both have to put in productive work time and each user can review our time logs in order to keep ourselves more productive. So we don't really check this now. I mean, I fundamentally don't really care what Rob does because we're at a point now in a company where um, the two founders, even if they worked 24 hours a day, would not probably add that much additive advantages to the company. So once you get to a size of, you know, 50-ish employees, really the founders don't add that much to the process. But if you're in a team of three or four or four to five, then it's huge. So you want to be able to make sure that you've got that accountability in place. And, and that's in essence, in essence what we've done. We, I, I kind of call it mutually assured productivity. Uh, so we, we've literally both decided to focus ourselves, keep ourselves both accountable. And um, it's been a great way that first year of building the company where, you know, money's tight, um, revenues aren't where you want them to be. Sometimes people lose faith and you want to be able to say, you know what, it doesn't matter. I'm putting in my X amount of hours every right. single week and it's happening. Yeah, I mean, it took you a lot of time and energy and putting those systems in place to get to where you are now, what was the pain that you experienced when you created Time Doctor? What made you create Time Doctor? Because obviously you had some pain with productivity or putting some system, systems in place. Right, so the with regards to Time Doctor, the reason why we, we built that, or the reason why I decided to work with Rob in building it, was uh, I was running an online tutoring company and um, I had about 100 tutors. So these tutors were located all over North America and Europe. Um, these were all graduate students. And the biggest problem that I had within my business was, um, you know, Jimmy the student would call me up and would say, I was billed for eight hours of tutoring time with my tutor this month, and it was four hours if it was a minute more. 
So then I'd have to go to the tutor, and I would say, uh, Jimmy says that you've got, that you've only did, done uh, four hours with this particular student, but you've billed him for eight, so what's the deal? And the tutor would say, no, I absolutely did eight hours. You know, there's marking, there's all these other things that are connected to it. I did eight hours. So what I would have to end up doing is, to keep the customer, is I would refund Jimmy for four hours, and I would pay the tutor for the full eight hours, yeah. which would mean I am out of money. Right, I'm in the I'm in the red right. for that particular transaction. This was one of the major reasons why uh, the business really couldn't get to that next level is because I was constantly hindered by this process. Time Doctor as software completely solves that problem for me. I could know what each of my tutors are doing, how productive they are in completing those tasks. So. You know, regular time tracking software can literally just say, hey, I'm going to stare at a screen and uh, I'm going to stare at a screen for six hours and move my mouse around and that's six hours. Time Doctor is a little bit different. It's literally like Google Analytics for your workday. So you not only know how long you're working, but you know how productive you are. Right. So those two metrics in place could allow a company like my first tutoring company to really get past that barrier and not have um, that huge sort of uh, uh, sort of or the dagger of Damocles, sort of Damocles over your head. It's it's really it was fundamentally one of the biggest things that 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 uh, retarded the growth of that first company. Yeah. And if I were to start it again today, it wouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah. So basically, we need to go out there. We need to find someone to hold us accountable, and then put a system in place to track it. Um, initially, and I know the second thing you were talking about is, you know, you preach a lot about put barriers in place to stop you from being unproductive. So, you know, with the get someone to hold you accountable and use something to track it. I know you have a great story for something that happened that um, before you actually put the system in place. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, which I'm gonna... I have to mention, you probably didn't want to talk about it first, but you're gracious enough to share. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change this story around a little bit so that I and we're not gonna include names, but uh, sure. so so I had a uh, I had a girlfriend at the time, um, and I was uh, working, and we were supposed to meet at my place for dinner, and. Um, I believe we were supposed to meet around, you know, nine or ten o'clock or something like that. So she came to my house preemptively. She had a set of keys, which I had given her the week previous. So she had a set of keys. She cleaned up my house, which was fantastic. Um, got everything ready, um, and you know, was basically ready to have a nice night out with me. And I, at that point, also one of my productivity hacks is not having a cell phone. So I just recently purchased an, uh, a new cell phone, but I haven't had a cell phone for the last three years. Wow. And that's so that people don't bug me. Um, whenever you pick up the phone, you're literally disconnected from what you're doing and focused on, and you're talking to that person, and it takes at least 15 minutes to get back into that first task. So um, I've removed those types of distractions from my life. Again, putting those barriers in to force you into productivity. So I didn't have a cell phone. Um, so I was basically uncontactable, and I was working. Right, I was I was working out with another buddy of mine um, on a particular problem in the business. So I had it was I, I think we were supposed to meet around nine o'clock. It was ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, and you know around eleven thirty. She's pretty angry, right? I mean, right. like anybody would be. A um, whole bunch of emails sent to me. Of course, I'm shutting off my email because I'm working on this particular task. She can't call me, you know. Outside of putting up smoke signals, there's nothing that she can do. And this had happened two or three other times, unfortunately. Um, just because, again, I'm not a very productive guy. Uh, I don't have my shit together, right? I put systems in place to get my shit put together. Right. So she, so I come back around two o'clock in the morning to a clean house. I thought someone had robbed me. <laughs> the opposite. A very like, clean right. thief had come in and like, you know, stolen all my stuff and then cleaned up my house as a thank you or as an apology. Um, so I, I, I show up, 
clean house, um, have a WTF moment, walk into the bedroom, and there's a printout of a uh, very attractive woman in a very nice uh, bustier um, on the uh, on the bed, and that was basically the uh, the Dear John letter. It was kind of like screw you. She used better expletives than that. Yeah, um, I'm sure. But I'm I'm done. Um, so that was yeah. So basically, I I mean, as that date. Man, I was using Google Apps. It was injected into my brain. Like, there's no, you know, you you miss up an opportunity like that. Um, you don't really, uh, you, you don't make that mistake twice. For sure. And so, hopefully, people listening to this won't. So now you use automatic calendars, right? So you can set yeah. everything, and all, even your assistant sets things for you. Like this morning, when we were going to meet, you, you know, had something pop up, right? And um, so you have that set, so you don't forget these things. Yeah, and I mean, I BCC um, one of my assistants all the time through email. So mm -hmm. the interaction that we had through email, uh, my assistant has access to that, so that that person is is basically my second brain. So I'm constantly, you know, he can communicate with me. He can automatically set stuff up for me. Um, I see it pop up on my computer. I see it pop up on my phone. Um, that rem <clears throat> those reminders are in place so that I know that I don't have to um, I don't have to fundamentally remember that stuff. It just right. happens. Right. So again, like it's not only that system in place, but then you have another person kind of holding you accountable, or at least you're informing them. So you use that as a system, kind of BCCing, but with the automatic calendar too. Um, and I want to get to the next one about systemization, but I want to go to this fact that you you haven't you didn't have a cell phone for three years, like. Yeah. How, how you know, most people that is unfathomable. So yeah. tell us how you did that. There's how did been blog you... posts written about me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I remember um, I was in uh, I was at this big tech conference uh, down in Austin, and you know they would just say, "Oh, here's this newest app, so we can all stay in touch and and we can all be on the same chat log or something like that." Oh, great! I don't have a cell phone, so. It's cool, guys. What? You don't have a cell phone? Are what? Yeah, that's... and you run a tech company, and you don't have a cell phone. You're like the last guy on the face of the planet that doesn't have a cell phone. Um, and not only that, like I didn't have. A, it's not just that I didn't have a smartphone. I did not have a cell phone. I have. Shit. I have a a landline phone, right? I have a whole bunch <laughs> that I've. Oh, um, I have VoIP, right? I have Skype, and I have landlines. And right. the great advantage about Skype is you can shut it off, and it just completely disappears. And I know you can set, shut off your cell phone too, but you know what? Um, people it's always are with you. Yeah. Always with you. Um, th this is a continuous process, a continuous communication process uh, that that's that's always there to disconnect you from work, right? Um, if you're, let's say, you're writing a great blog post and you're in the flow. Um, you know, whenever you get into that flow moment where you're just things are the pages are flying, or um, you're in a you know you're in a sales meeting and things are going well, whatever that situation may be, you probably have those in your life all the time. And to be disconnected from that, either by a beep or a bop or a cell phone Rich. or someone coming in. Um, it's really destructive towards your overall productivity. If you can actually an hour of focused, committed time without anything beeping at you. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's been studies that have been um, that have looked at this, but my personal mindset on that is it's probably worth about three hours of interrupted time. I mean, I know that. You know that. The person listening knows that. But how did you actually do it? I mean, it's a matter of I know the phone distracts me, but if I try to get rid of it, I don't know if I could actually – I wouldn't even think of getting rid of it. How did you yeah. actually get rid of it? The disconnection process is somewhat difficult. Um, it took me about 90 days to get off. That's quick. Yeah. So, it, like, I had these moments where I was, like, grabbing for my phone for stuff. It's like a right? drug addiction. Text somebody. Oh, I don't have a phone. Oh, I'll just check that on Google Apps. Oh, oh I don't have a phone. Um, that would happen quite a bit. Um, it also creates a filtering process 
for me in terms of my social life because I found out very quickly that interacting with people through the cell phone is not is is a very um, when you don't sorry when you don't have a cell phone the barrier to entry to access me is much more difficult you have to plan things ahead with me for right sure. it creates a filtering system for my social calendar so that I know whoever wants to actually meet with me is really interested in meeting with me not just somebody who's like hey what's up they bro? have to keep following up and keep following up and be persistent enough or, or find you in different ways where you know yeah. it, it means a lot, it means enough to them to do it so even I'm falling into this trap now and I should really be getting out of it is uh, cell phones we're having these moments where it's like oh hey yeah we'll meet up downtown um, oh around you know around eight ish I don't know when where are we gonna meet I don't know let's just all show up downtown and, and figure it out right? right before cell phones we couldn't do that we couldn't do that right. and the and and when I didn't have a cell phone I would say okay I need to know where it's going to be I need to know when it's going to be and I'm gonna schedule it in right. so that I exactly when I'm supposed to leave and show you know everything again was systematized now it's this it's this uh, it's this meeting out in the ether I guess you could right. call it I don't really know when it's gonna happen and right. just sort of be around again I want to be able to focus my time I've literally got four meetings today um, I need to be able to structure those meetings properly right. and then be able to get in work in between those meetings. Right. So being able to know exactly when something's going to happen and for how long, critically important. So for all of us who our cell phone's more like a drug and we can't give it up, maybe just shut it off, you know, for an hour, two hours, half a day, you know, in the extreme case like Liam, he's got the self control to just get rid of it. Um, so we talked about you know holding someone, having someone hold us accountable, putting the barriers in place to stop us from being unproductive, and even the extreme of getting rid of the cell phone. And I know you have a lot of things to talk about systemization and how you systemized your company. So we could look at putting some of these systems in place. What can you talk a little bit about how you systemize your company um, and a little bit about that? Yeah. So <clears throat> I mean, before um, I really started with systematization. Uh, things were another mess. I was just running around with a with my head cut off, um, doing a little something here and then doing a little something there, and not fundamentally finishing anything. Starting yeah, a lot of things, relate, but not actually sure. finishing them. Yeah. yeah. So um, systematization forces you, in essence, to have everything that you do within your company thought out completely, right? So. I'll give you the perfect example. Um, if you've got, well, I'll give you an example with something that we were just working on. We have uh, a marketing division and we have marketing tactics. So I think right now on our wiki system, we have about uh, probably about 40 or 50 of these little mini tactics. So the tactic would be um, uh, how to attract somebody from Twitter, so how to attract someone who's tweeted out a job spec on Twitter to staff.com. So how does that process work? Well, there may be nine steps, there may be 22 steps, but you need to be able to figure out exactly what you do. And most people don't do that. Most people say, oh, don't worry about it, I'm just gonna figure it out on Twitter, right? I'm gonna assign somebody to do that and they're gonna go out and, and accomplish that particular task and it's gonna be fine. Well, what if that person quits, gets hit by a bus, um, you know, doesn't like you anymore and just decides to sabotage your life. All of these other things could come up. So what you need to be able to do is take that information, mm -hmm. take that process, document it, um, systematize it, put it on a digital platform. So like Google Apps works, a wiki system works, something like that, and put that somewhere where you can, uh, where any employee can get access to it. So I went from a company that was, well, my very first company that was literally, no one really knew what they were doing. Everyone was kind of doing something, but no one really knew what it, anyone else was doing to a company now where it's complete, it's leveled. Okay, so any employee can show up and can say, hey, what are the developers doing? 
I'm going to go over to the wiki, uh, the, to the to the uh, to the developers section of the wiki and see what their systems are. Um, let's say somebody becomes sick and all of a sudden they can't do that Twitter task. Well, I can just grab somebody else, pop them on that Twitter task, say, "Here's what you need to learn. Go out and do it." And it's been I mean, I would say that above all else has been the biggest success in the business, being able to get those systems in place and making sure that they're not only um, not only that they're there, but that they're understandable. So yeah. like, I, you know, we had discussed this earlier, and I'm sure you could probably check out my other course um, content to be able to get more context on it, but you have to be able to make that information so incredibly clear for them that there won't be that, that a three-year-old could understand it so right. what we usually do is we put down the tasks it's usually in step-by-step -step form we have a preamble at the top discussing why this task is important and you know why you're doing it it usually includes a video so we use Jing or ScreenFlow or any of these other types of screen uh, mm -hmm. capture and software that actually takes you through the steps and we include that up as a link, as a YouTube link or as a Jing link. And um, that, in essence, creates a set of processes that are not just easy to understand, but impossible to misunderstand. Right. And that's the big jump, right? Don't just make easy to understand processes. Make processes that are impossible to misunderstand. Once you get to that point, it's like the... The matrix opens up for you. All these things start to just automatically happen without you really uh, needing to do them. And there's a whole bunch of stuff happening right now in the company. I don't even know what's really going on, but I know that it's happening. I, I know that it's reliably happening because we put the systems in place. And once we put them in place, they're working, they're operational. We can basically forget about them and do new things. Right, and that allows you to manage everything, even even a big company, because you can go in and see, because you can see the document and process. Anyone can access it. Also, from a standpoint of, like you said, let's say someone's sick. Let's say you need to have cross-train someone on something else. You can just plug them in, and it's all there step-by-step. Step. And you mentioned some of the, you know, just making videos and making it so it's impossible not to understand it. So... That's, I'll, yeah. I'll give you one last example um, to jump off with. Our sales team, which we've currently been building right now, um, it took us, the first salesperson or the first iteration of our sales team took us three months to spin up a salesperson to the point in which they're profitable for our company. Okay, That process now has been cut down to three and a half weeks Wow. using the systems. Right, and so plus less that, time on your part, probably less. Yeah, time I mean, I know too. that doesn't sound super sexy to everybody, but for a business owner, months, that's very sexy. Yeah, three and a half weeks. Yeah, um, that means for, for me, I I love the work of uh, Bruno Latour, actor network theory. He's a very crazy, nasty French sociologist, but his his concept is um, actants. So to be able to look at humans and objects is the same thing. So, you know, the knife and me are a unit together. Uh, we, we eat our dinner, right? That's the, that's the task that we've been put together. If the knife breaks or I break, then that's when the system breaks down. So I see human beings from a larger perspective as no different from a server or from a fork or from a cup or anything else. They all have to work together. Right. So for me, I think of it in the context of... I love the fact okay, that you have a knife right by for that, too. Like, that's yeah, amazing. Well, <laughs> uh, so, the, uh, so for me, getting a salesperson up and running is the same philosophy as getting another Amazon instance up, getting another server up, yeah. right? We're, we're at capacity. We've got to get another server up. Okay, we're at capacity. We've got to get another salesperson <clears throat> up here uh, and working. And think about that in that same context and it's just a complete eye-opener if you can get to that point. Yeah, I mean, those are all great, great tactics, and uh, we'll all remember those stories. Um, tell us, just just make a list uh, of the, the tools and software you use. Obviously, you mentioned some before, but some of the things that we can look at to you know implement for ourselves. Sure. So, um, you know, number one, you can take a 30-day free trial of Time Doctor. That's absolutely free. 
what it will allow you to do is monitor your own productivity. Um, it will not only show you how long you've worked, but how productively you work, literally like Google Analytics for your work day. Then um, for me, from the business perspective, from the business side, um, any type of wiki software, so this is usually open source software that you mm -hmm. can just either s install directly on your own server, or there are a lot of cloud-based wikis that are e that are either free or almost free. Mm -hmm. um, you know, put those up. That's how you can start to systematize things. If you want to go even easier than that and faster, Google Apps is fantastic. Yeah. Um, it allows you from the, the Google Docs, you know, you can share that Google Doc with anybody and now with Google Drive, yeah. they can be shared on 50 different people's computers and they yeah. can really be living yeah. documents across your organization. And yeah. for remote businesses like ours, you know, our company is, our, we have employees in nine different countries, it's critically important to be able yeah. to have this. On a side note, I mean, Google Docs, has changed my life. I mean, with my wife. Like, instead of her, and she may not like this, you know, she'll call me or I'm writing all these post-it notes. I just say, put it in this one Google Doc yeah. and just put it there and we'll go through it. It's like yeah. the honey-do list. So that has changed my life. So, sorry, go on. Yeah, absolutely. And and the other great thing about it is um, you can send it to your to your smartphone. You can, any device that can access Google can mm -hmm. access Google Docs. So it's it's a beauty from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Another component connected to that, to the Google Apps platform, particularly for small businesses, is a Google Calendar. So that integrates with all of my other stuff. It integrates with my Mac Calendar. Um, and I also have a delegated copy sent to my assistant. So that assistant uh, can have access to my calendar, can make um, postings for me on my behalf, can also answer emails for me on my behalf if um, if I want. Um, just a bunch of different tools, really for outsourced remote businesses. I would say Google Apps is a huge thing. Um, another thing as well is Jing. Um, it's free, right? Jing is is absolutely free. I'm sure if you just Google Jing, you'd be able to find it. It's amazing and, too. Yeah. You're yeah. Exactly right. And all it does is it allows you to produce either pictures or up to five minutes video for its free version or unlimited video for its paid version. Um, but fundamentally, all you really need is a video that's under five minutes anyways for most of these systematization tasks. Hmm. And you can um, do a screen, a screen recording just like any other screen recording software. But the beauty of it is that once you've completed the recording, and you've put in your annotations and all those types of things, you can just hit click, upload to the cloud, it uploads it in 10 seconds, it gives you a short link that you can then send to somebody on Skype or put on a process document or anything like that. Right. So it's beautiful um, to have that as a capability. And I mean, it's a tool that I use oh, 10 times a day. If I wanna be able to communicate an idea, like um, communicating to my designer, hey, I want this done, but not this done, I do a picture, I do the little annotations, I can literally dro drop in some arrows, it takes me 10 seconds, send that off to the yeah. designer, the, the designer knows exactly yeah. um, what I need. Much easier to, to show, like if you email them instructions, you know, but if you actually show them, point to different things, or make a video, it's so easy, you're exactly right. Um, the other yeah. thing is, is, with regards to redundancies, um, sometimes, to me, I mean, software is great, but I also believe that humans are an important part of the chain. So mm -hmm. with regards to um, if you guys haven't tried or if you haven't tried an assistant or a virtual assistant, so you may even want to just go um, real world, we call it real world, where you'll have a real world assistant. That's great. Um, there's a lot of concierge services out on the market right now. One of the best ones that I've seen recently is Prialto.com. Calm, I believe, and what they do is it's really a, it, it's a virtual assistant for executives. Hmm. Uh, they do a great job, and it's really for somebody who doesn't want a fully committed virtual assistant, but wants a high-end concierge service designed for executives. Now, if you want to go full time, you can always go with uh, with our company, Staff.com, but those are just for full time virtual assistants or yeah. work relationships. So yeah. we don't do contract work. Uh, or anything like that. So, you know, companies like Prialto, 
great options. Uh, Real World is a great option, or Listock.com is another option that you can go with. Nice. So one last question. You talked about a lot of different, you know, great systems and tactics. What's one thing the audience should do right now to get started and be more productive? You know, it's, you know, they'll go back through and choose a few things, but what's the one thing they should do right now that you'd recommend? So I thought about this a lot when you asked this question, and um, I'm going to go with an easy win. Okay, there are other things that I could tell you that probably would get you more done in less time, but we're going to go for the easiest win, win humanly possible. So when you're finished with this video, what I want you to do is either go and find an egg timer in your house, go find an egg timer, or even easier is, I don't know if you have an, a Mac, I'm sure they're available on PC as well, but I have this little thing called dashboard that allows me to put up little widgets on my, uh, you know, on my uh, computer. Mm -hmm. There are a whole bunch of egg timer apps, timer mm -hmm. apps that you can get and just download and put up. And I'm sure there's some of these are directly connected to productivity. Put that down on your table, turn it for two minutes, and say, for two minutes, I am going to do task X. And just do that. Two minutes. Anybody can do anything for two minutes, right? Just do it for two minutes. I guarantee you that when that egg timer beeps at the end of those two minutes you'll be in complete you'll be in this beautiful state of flow and you'll probably want to just keep going right whereas beforehand getting started when you say hey I'm gonna write this I have to write a blog post today so um, I'm gonna write this blog post It's gonna take me like usually a blog post takes me about 12 hours to write if I'm writing something that's important yeah. right guest post for somebody that I really respect and I want to be able to make sure that I take the time to be able to produce a beautiful piece of content. Um, that content, or sorry, that, that, that 12 hours of work is a huge, that's a mountain of work to do. Oh yeah. But if you can just say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to take my egg timer out, I'm going to set it to two minutes, put it down on the table, I'm just going to work for two minutes. And you have to really believe that after those two minutes are up, you can get up and you can go back and play, uh, start playing video games or, you know, eat bacon or whatever the heck you do. Uh, so just have that philosophy, set it down, two minutes, start doing some work. I can guarantee you that you'll be in a creative state of flow. And, um, and, and that really is the secret for me whenever I want to just get started on something because once you have something on the page um you're already that's like 90 percent of the battle yeah it just gets that ball rolling so i just want to thank you liam this has been great and from egg timer for two minutes to getting rid of your cell phone yep. i think we'll leave it there i appreciate it and uh everyone should check out you know time doctor and my staff uh, dot com and uh, our staff dot com and uh yeah, we'll just I'm gonna go get my egg timer right now. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Liam.